All right, part number two for this. Let's talk about weightlessness. All right, what is weightlessness? Well, some examples of this would be orbiting the Earth, and also it would be like a roller coaster ride um, that lets you go in free fall. So if you were at Cedar Point, and I know if you haven't been to Cedar Point, this might not make a whole lot of sense, but if you have, and you're riding on Power Tower, Power Tower just takes you up and it lets you go and lets you fall. When you're falling, all right, you're going to be in free fall. All right, that makes you feel weightless. Is gravity pulling on you? Yep, it is pulling on you. It's pulling on you at 9.8 meters per second squared, making you fall at exactly the same rate as the object is falling that you're sitting on. So you're all falling at the same rate, so you can't feel gravity, so you feel weightless. Okay? Um, and we'll talk about orbiting in just a second, but uh, it's weightlessness. There's two ways in which you can be considered weightlessness. One way would be as if there's no gravity. And if there's no gravity, we're talking about way out in outer space, a long ways away from Earth. We're like way far out by Pluto, beyond there. We're out in outer space, nothing around us. Then we're weightless because there's no objects to pull on us to give us gravity. That's one way we can be weightless. The second way we can be weightless is if I can't feel gravity, which would be like the idea of riding a roller coaster. And as I fall, I can't feel the gravity pulling on me, so I will feel weightless. All right. Even though gravity is pulling on me, but I have nothing to push up against to feel the gravity against me. All right. So letter B, gravity pulls an object towards the earth. We know that. That's why if you take a ball, let go of it, it falls towards the earth. Let go of a pen, falls the earth. Gravity is always pulling on all of it. It's pulling on us right now. If you, if you jump up in the air, you'll come back down because gravity is pulling on you. So a little demonstration thing is if I took a cup and I filled it full of water and I poked a hole in the bottom of it, Okay. And I put water in it and I held the bottom of the cup okay. so the water doesn't come out. If I take my finger off the hole and let go, I want you to think about what's going to happen. Do you think water is going to come out of that hole as the cup falls to the floor? Or is the water going to stay up there and then the cup's going to fall and then all of a sudden water is going to go? Or what do you think is going to happen? Well, I will tell you what's going to happen actually is when you hold that cup, hold that hole, if you let go, everything falls at exactly the same rate. There's no water that comes out of the hole. There's no water that goes up in the air. It just all falls at exactly the same rate. If you want to try this at home, try it. Take a styrofoam cup, stick a hole in the bottom of it, fill it full of water, and then hold the hole and then let go and see what happens. And you'll see that all the water stays inside the cup as it falls. All right. Uh, so it says there, drop a cup of water with a large hole in the bottom into a bucket. Why won't any water come out of the hole as it falls? Because everything falls at 9.8 meters per second squared. And that's the answer there is both the cup and the water are falling at the same rate. Okay. Letter E, Space Lab is falling around the Earth when it's in orbit. Oh, now this takes us back to this idea. Let me get rid of this thing over here. All right, and that is it. That space lab that's cruising around the Earth, it's orbiting, right? And it's going around the Earth. What's actually happening is, if we take this thing and I make Earth, so here's Earth. Well, Earth is exerting gravitational pull on that object, pulling it down. Right? But as long as that space lab has got enough forward inertia, it's going fast enough, 26,000 miles an hour, that's how fast it's going. Right? It's got enough forward inertia that that curved path that we talked about earlier in the notes follows the curve of the Earth. So this curve is going to go this way, and that's going to go this way, and that's going to go this way, and that's going to come right back up here, and it will not have hit the Earth. And that's actually why things orbit the Earth, is because they've got enough forward inertia, and they got gravity pulling down on them, that that curved path follows the curvature of the Earth. All right, so, so according to your notes there, it says you got forward inertia, and you got downward gravity. The two of those blend together to give a curve that's equal to the curve of the Earth. Now, what if, what if we had no forward inertia? If the object wasn't moving forward, then what's it gonna do? It's gonna fall straight down to the Earth, okay? And that would be what happens like if you drop something out of an airplane, it falls to the Earth. Now, what if we didn't have gravity? What if you just had forward inertia? Well, then the object just keeps going straight out into space, all right? But as long as we have both of those, then the object just keeps going and it orbits the Earth. Now, this is actually really, really important to you guys. And, and you're like, how's this important to me? Well, in order for your cell phone to work, you got to have satellites up in the sky that are orbiting the Earth, going around the Earth. And if we don't have those, your cell phone ain't going to be nothing but a piece of plastic in your back pocket doing nothing. 
So we've got to have all of these thousands of satellites up there that are going around the Earth and orbiting, and it's all because they got forward inertia and gravity's pulling down on them, so that when I talk on my phone, it can go up there and come back down to another person a long ways away. So, so this does relate to us. All right, the last piece there says, therefore, weightlessness can be explained in two ways. One way is a lack of gravitational force. That means way out in outer space, a long ways away. I'm not talking about orbit. I'm talking about way far out there. We're not near any other object, not near the Earth, not near the moon. We're not near the sun. We're way out in outer space. Then we're weightless because there's no other gravity, no other object to pull on us. But the one that's more common for us around here is a lack of a means of detecting the effect of gravity. It's free fall, which would be like orbit. So if I were to ask you a question later, like on the whole idea is, um, why, do, why are people that are in the space lab, why are they considered to be weightless? It's all because they're in free fall. That's why they're falling around the earth constantly all the time. All right, all right well that finishes this set of notes. So we will talk to you later. Have a great day.